I've been with LAX for 29 years, and I started. Oh, okay, for this. Okay. Uh, and I started off in delivery, and I started assembling furniture and opening it, and that's where most of our problems come from as far as recycling and what led us to recycling. Uh, at that time, back about 29 years ago, most of the packaging was cardboard and plastic. Styrofoam really wasn't used that much. And um, it was cardboard because it was cheap. And you could get it readily quickly. Uh, manufacturers were mostly here in the United States where there are areas like in the Northeast where there's trees and forests. So trees were and wood were available for paper products. Then there, then there was uh, control on forestation. So they had to look for different things to package the material or the products, and they started using styrofoam. Styrofoam is real light. For example, this, this, the reason we stacked this together, this represents the same weight as one of these blocks. It's three pounds. So you can see the volume that it creates. But it is a real good product. It does what it's supposed to do. It absorbs impact. It's light. It doesn't add to the weight of the product. You can break the product down and package it in such a way that it makes it smaller and easier to uh, load. Um, going back to where, where we started, we had a problem when this styrofoam started being used in that we didn't know what to do with it. All we could do was put it into a trailer, haul it off to the landfill, and dump it. Well, if we move over to the slide where the decomposition rate is, the second, third slide, please. Right here, okay, just stay right here for a second. This is a styrofoam that's produced roughly in one day out of our distribution center. This is what we have to contend with and deal with on a daily basis. This is our recycle center at our distribution center in FAR. And when we have uh, high impact sales, that amount could double. We deliver anywhere from 650 to 800 pieces of furniture a day. So all that has to be opened, assembled, and then that's what we produce, the plastic, the styrofoam, and some cardboard. The majority of it is styrofoam as far as volume goes. And you can imagine putting that in a dumpster. One of those bags will fill the dumpster. But it's real light, and it's not feasible to ship it out anywhere to get it uh, processed. We had to figure out a way to process it here to make it feasible to ship. So we, um, we started looking for ways to, to process it. What can we do with it? We can grind it, we can bale it, we can melt it. Well, that's one of the three ways you can process the EPS, which uh, is either use of chemicals like solvents, petroleum-based solvents. The only problem with that is that you create fumes by melting it alone, and that becomes a problem. Then you have to store that liquid that you produce by melting the styrofoam, which is the styrene, and you have to store that. Then you have to deal with OSHA rules, and you have to deal with environmental protection rules, and it's just a big old mess, so it's not something we were looking for to do. The other way is to bale it. The problem with styrofoam, uh, come back a little bit, stay back. Uh, the problem with styrofoam, it does not compact well, which makes it, this is why it makes it a good uh, shock absorber, so to speak, when it comes to protecting something. But when you try to compress it, you'll probably reduce it down to about 30% of its original size. So you can see it's not going to be feasible to compress it. You can't really bail it. That becomes efficient. It becomes feasible to ship. So we had to look for the, another alternative. We did find a company that uh, had um, a machine that's called the thermal uh, densifier. What it does is that it melts the foam to a point before it burns and makes it soft. If you move up forward. Go ahead. Okay, well, let me just tell you real quick about decomposition rates and why we thought styrofoam was an important thing. Uh, this is taken from the Houston uh, Clean, which is Citizens League of Environmental Action Now. What they do is they educate the public and tell the public or inform the public of things that we need to, as a city, do to recycle and reduce our waste in our landfill. And they uh, have this rate, decomposition rate, in their landfill which uh, they studied and came up with this. Paper de uh, des decompo decompo decomposes two to four weeks. Leaves, for example, from three, one to three weeks. Orange peel, six months. Milk cartons, 
the volatile organic compound, five years, a plastic bag, 10 to 20 years, plastic container, 50 to 80 years, aluminum can, 100 years, plastic soda bottle, 450 years, uh, glass bottle, 500 years, and styrofoam, the, never, okay? That depends on the salinity of the soil. In areas like in Arizona, where it's dry and there's, there's, uh, there's high salinity in the soil, actually that decomposition rate reduces by 100 years. Big wow, it's not a much of a, of, a, of a difference, but what I'm trying to point out is that styrofoam is one of the nasties that we can't put in our landfill. So when we were looking for ways to treat it, that's what we were looking for, what to do with it, how to process it in such a way that it'll make it feasible to ship and possibly use it as a raw material for building. As we did research, go on to the next. We found this machine, and this company's called Recycle Tech. They're out of New Jersey, and the machine grinds the styrofoam and feeds it. And you can see the grinder at top where the styrofoam is going up on the conveyor belt, and it falls into a chute, and then it falls into a cylinder. That cylinder has an auger, and it's pushing that material along as it's moving towards the exit, which is being extruded at the end over here where this yellow uh, part is. And there's heater bands. Those heater bands are, are slowly heating up that styrofoam as it's turning, and it's forming into the paste. And it looks like toothpaste, actually, when it comes up. Go ahead and switch. One more. It looks like toothpaste as it's coming out. It comes out roughly at about 400 degrees, 350 to 400 degrees, depending on the ambient temperature outside. Uh, we have to either crank up the temperature or crank it down depending on the humidity and the heat. And that we form pans. Those pans, rough, they're baking pans actually that we uh, figured out how to develop something to stack them on easier versus just making patties and letting it drop on the floor because it, it cools quickly and it hardens. And this gives us enough time to form this pan and fill those uh, pans and stack them. And they roughly weigh about 50 pounds each, so we'll stack 40 per pallet and that gives us about a ton per pallet. And that then becomes something feasible to ship. And you can see uh, most of these weights are written on the side where we're over 2,000 pounds. This is what we produce uh, by thermo thermally in, uh, melting or, or melting the material and we remove the air, basically is all we did, okay? This actually resembles this cup here. I brought this cup, I actually went to Dairy Queen today and it's polystyrene, okay, which is styrene made from this. Almost similar in color. You can see a little bit of the same color. It's translucent when it's first produced. If you heat it again, it becomes this color, okay? So the, the styrene uh, is the basis of making cups like this, and I'll show you a, a few more products that they make from it. But what we do is we sell it to an end user who then grinds it and uses it again is, as either a filler or uses it as a new material because you can make quite a bit, a lot of things with it. You move on to where we have the, well, I think these things, right here. The solar cups that everybody's familiar with, the song and all that, that's, uh, that's polystyrene. The Dairy Queen cu cup that I just pointed out is also polystyrene. CD cases are made out of polystyrene, okay? What else can be made from it is when you add it to styrene butadiene, becomes styrene butadiene rubber. And this is the raw form of that styrene butadiene. And it can be used to make tennis shoe sole and tires. And you'll see it on floor mats. You'll see it just about everywhere. You see some form of, fo of foam. Something spongy usually has SBR in it, okay? And that's the form of styrene and it being recycling, recycled by the end users. Most of this is going to China. A lot of the recycled materials go back to China. China's the big buyer of recycled goods. Okay, from e-waste to uh, styrofoam and other, uh, other recycled materials go to China. So they're the big buyer. Everybody really sells to China. Very few companies here in the United States do the styrofoam. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the cost of producing something, but uh, the majority goes to China. We pack it into uh, containers and we load them uh, specifically to go straight to China on containers. Okay. Um, Going back to the styrofoam real quick, depending on the density of the foam, this is a little more spongier than this one. Obviously, this is a little more dense. 
and they use it in different ways, which makes it hard to, to really tell you how much we saved in landfill space because of the density. But this particular styrofoam is real flimsy, so there's not, there's, there's, it's not as dense. But when you look at packaging that comes on the refrigeration and uh, all the laundry goods, the, the styrofoam is a little more rigid. So it takes the impact a little better. They put it on the corners, and it does, it does its job well, better than cardboard. Okay? Um, the other items that you see that are made out of polystyrofoam, I mean out of uh, polystyrene, are these products here that you see every day, from plates to clamshell uh, plates to egg cartons. Okay, we have started receiving uh, to the general public all the styrofoam that they that they send us. Uh, we currently have three cities that we're partnered with that send us their material directly. If you please scroll to the next one, it should be what? Boy, these things got mixed up. Go back to where. Go back to where it shows the there. This is post consumer. This is what we receive. For example, this was a shipment from the city of Harlingen. Okay. They collect it from their, from their citizens. They just ask them to make sure that it's clean, and we take it on a regular basis. I think they ship us uh, a shipment about every other week, if I'm not mistaken. So they'll collect it and then ship it to us. Yes, sir. At the point of, yes, yes. We provide the bags. Uh, we developed a little system on how to package it. We provide the bags and frames that hold those bags specifically for that reason because they can be loaded easier by one person. They're roughly about each bag of that weighs about 40 pounds, about 40 pounds. And aside from that, we get uh, I mean, contractors who use the styrofoam on facades and moldings and things like that. So they have a lot of refuge from that because they cut pieces off and, and shape it and whatnot, and they'll bring it straight over here versus them sending it straight to the landfill and it costs them money. So we're actually saving them money, and it helps us offset our expenses. The more material we can run, obviously, the more we can offset our expenses in the initial, uh, the, uh, initial cost of running. Okay, Go. what else do you have? Uh, I'm sorry, are we done? I'm sorry? Yeah, I think this is the last slide. All right, uh, why are we recycling? Obviously, because styrofoam is probably one of the worst things that we have been putting in the landfill. Uh, I did a presentation for STAR, which is the state of Texas Allegiance of Recyclers, uh, two years ago. And right now, currently, in the Valley, we were at that time the only company recycling styrofoam or processing styrofoam. In the state, we were probably one of three or four at that time. So uh, what else is going, uh, what makes you think about it is that there's other companies who are producing about as much styrofoam as we are, and it's going to the landfill. The landfill in Donna recently closed this past year. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with that, but the landfill in Donna on Salinas Road closed, and the, the big one over here, the big mountain, it's closed, and they've moved it out to Moorefield Road. And um, they're now rethinking of what they're taking into that landfill. One of these items that they're not taking is this. So I know that, it, how did it, go ahead. There is, because yeah. the one the last I heard it had closed. Oh, it did. Yeah, it was still going. Maybe I'll check. Okay, we we work with other menu, uh, furniture stores also. So we receive from about six other furniture stores. It helps them reduce their cost by not putting it into the dumpsters. Obviously, you're emptying the real light dumpster. It's not feasible, and they'll send it over to us, and we process that styrofoam also. So we receive it from the public. Uh, we've told people. We've uh, we've tried to get the word out. If you're closest to one of our stores, uh, Brownsville, Harlingen, or Rio Grande City, just take it to the nearest store, tell them you want to recycle it, and they'll send it over to us. Okay. Um, in reference to the machine itself, um, the machine itself, the startup wasn't too bad. I mean, uh, I think we offset the expense on the machine in the first year. What we went through was a learning curve on how much to put in it, how much to run, how hot it needs to be. So a lot of it was learning, but once we got through that in the first year, it was it was easy. We just started running the machine and processing the styrofoam. It it's not custom built. They're now producing more of them, but at that time it was. That time it was. Yeah, it's it's fairly new, and it's actually recycling the styrofoam is really really new. Uh, 
There's a company in Mexico who's now looking at buying this, and what they make is trays, food trays and stuff like that, and cabinets for uh, electronics. Okay. Um, let's see what else I had to cover. Mandy. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There is a smell. We've had we've talked to the manufacturer of the of the machine. It's not a a fume per se. I guess it's if it's ingested for a long period of time, it could make you sick. But we use it in the open air. What we have, if, I don't know if you noticed when we were showing the picture of the uh, of the styrofoam in, in the bags, we have an open roof. It's out in the open. It's it's not enclosed. This is petroleum. So it's gonna it's gonna burn. No, it's just a smell. It's just a smell. Like when you when you melt plastic, it's similar in that. That very first one, go up. There. It takes fifty bags to make a pallet. Fifty bags. Uh, yeah, and it takes 30 bags to fill a 53-foot trailer. So it's, I mean, it, the volume itself, it was, it, it was, it was monumental. I mean, it was hard to deal with. We just didn't know what to do with it. It was mountains of it, mountains. Yeah. And this really has come in handy for that. I mean, the machine has really done it for us. And then we're, we're still looking for other end users. What we're hoping to find is someone who can buy it direct and not go through a broker because that increases our price and it, increase, and it reduces their price because we don't pay a middleman. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It can be remade to styrofoam again. But really, styrofoam is EPS, expanded polystyrene. And expanded polystyrene is just air infused. So you can take this and reheat it to a certain temperature, re-inject the air, and you'll make pellets. And those, those pellets can be molded into just about anything. These corner blocks that we use here, that's what, that's what they are. They just mold them. So they add air to the styrene, and it expands. Okay. okay. Right now, at the point we are, we're breaking even. Because the machine does, uh, we're running about 460 bolts through it and because of the whole machinery running. So we're breaking even with the manpower and other things that we do at the recycle center. But one of our biggest producers of income is the styrofoam. Because we do with uh, cardboard and plastic also, LDPE and OCC. Probably more material, more material. Because of those, that volume, uh, these guys, our guys are so efficient in it that they'll run that material within about, I would say about three hours, okay? But obviously we can't hold that much material there to run the whole day. No. As far as we're running, yes. We are actually looking at a, at a bigger machine, at a bigger machine. I'm sorry, you had a question. That, that's a very good question because we talked to a manufacturer. The problem with, the, with that, that reuse here, there's no, there's no producers here. We'd have to ship it overseas. Most of the manufacturing is happening overseas. Even the furniture industry. I'm sorry? Well, uh, well in 2010, 55 billion pounds of styrofoam were produced, and it was mostly in the uh, Asian rim. Okay. But even the furniture has moved. When I, was, when I first started with the company, the big majority of the furniture was being built in North Carolina and areas in the, in, in, in the Northeast. Now most of that's moved to Malaysia, China, Japan. A lot of those companies are the ones producing the furniture now. So the use of styrofoam is over there. We're just, we end up with a byproduct over here. And if we could get that to them, we did discuss that. If we ship you back a raw material to make styrofoam or to whatever company makes it for them, then could we reduce the cost of the furniture to us? 
but we we couldn't get an answer because there's so many companies making styrofoam, especially in that area. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, okay. Thank you.